fans, wherever you may be. Welcome back for another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. Join your host, Phil Alpstead, and co-host, sports writer and football analyst, Keith Myers, as we talk Seahawks football. Hey, Seahawks fans, and welcome back to another edition of the Seahawks Playbook Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Alpstead, sitting down with Keith Myers. We made it to the end of the draft. We're now into May. We've got the rookie mini training camp uh, coming up this weekend, and we've signed a bunch of, uh, after the draft, unrestricted free agents to uh, to come in and uh, so the team can have a look. Some of the, most of those uh signings will make it all the way to training camp and then kind of pare down after that there's also a few what they call invites uh they don't necessarily have a contract in hand but uh coming in just to have a look uh keith welcome in man yeah it's um it's an interesting uh week i know people look at this and the, the draft is exciting and those are names you've heard of and then they're like oh well these guys didn't even get drafted they can't be that good but let's look at and remember that puna ford was undrafted doug baldwin was undrafted it's the draft isn't an exact science and some guys make it to the end of the draft without a con without being drafted but that doesn't mean they aren't nfl players and um every year there seems to be two or three that that catch on um and you know, it's making a, making an impact. It's interesting because some guys wait until they're twenty two or twenty three years old to peak. I peaked when I was thirteen. Man, in <laughs> in, in junior high and middle school, I was unblockable. And uh, I got to high school, and it all leveled out for me. And yeah, got injured, and that was that. But these guys, you know, they're still kicking around. They want to play uh for whatever reason be it injury or COVID 19 or they went to a small school before they kind of established themselves there's just a number of reasons guys fall uh, i went out and looked at the overall players still available list uh out in, in unrestricted free agency and there's still some good guys guys that we looked at in the in the sixth seventh round in this draft are mm -hmm. still sitting out there waiting to sign with teams as well so it's an interesting time um but you know based on who we brought in, who we signed, the kind of players we're looking for, the kind of holes the team feels like they need to fill before they head to training camp. Some of it is just, hey, we need guys to take reps. Other times they're really that, interested yeah. in looking at a specific uh, tool set that a player has and they just want a, a closer look. So why don't we just kind of run through them and <clears throat> we can stop when things get interesting. It, it, it's really, there's a, there's a few guys out of this list that may have a shot at making the team. So maybe we can find those. Uh, mm -hmm. Matthew uh, Godel, uh, defensive tackle out of West Florida, 6'2", 341 pounds. And that guy's a squatty guy. Ran a 4'5", 240 with 32 and 3 inch arms. So he's not Wait, long. He's four, literally a bowling four, ball. 4'5", 2 or 5'5"? Five, 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 sorry. 5'2", 5'40". Okay. I, I was I'm like, that is insanely fast for a guy. That. <laughs> no, this is a, this is Brian Monet part two. Yeah. Because um, Brian Monet, another guy. Only shorter. Under, I think undrafted. he's even shorter. Yeah, but Monet, I mean, he was 360 pounds. Um, he's down to like 340 now, but um, just a ginormous guy. And so we've got another another guy like that. And being shorter at defensive tackle isn't always a bad thing if you've got the arm length. Um, because, I mean, Puna Ford is short. Aaron Donald is short for the position. And everyone's like, you know, uh, how can that be? Well, when you're, when you're lower to the ground, you have natural leverage. Um, and getting in, into position. So shorter doesn't matter if you've got the arm length so that way you can engage with the um, the offensive lineman and they can't just keep you away with longer arms. So, um, yeah, I mean, 340 pounds. Right. Brian Monet is get, getting more expensive. He's reaching that point where he's been with the team long enough that they're going to have to start. Um, they can't just pay him 450 grand anymore. He's going to start making a million, million and a half. The number start, starts to go up. They kind of need a replacement for him. This is a possibility. Keep an eye on him. 22 tackles, two tackles for loss, one sack, three quarterback hurries. He's obviously kind of a run-stuffing kind of guy, so those numbers really don't mean a lot. The thing that does mean a lot for somebody out there listening, maybe knows of him, he's from Tacoma, Washington. So, hey, 
Let's let's root for the local kid. All Always. right. Defensive end. I'm going to have a hard time with this last name. Um, <laughs> not the one that I said earlier. Oh, this is a different okay. one. No, this okay. This is uh, Uno Giogu. Uno Giogu from Division okay. Three, uh, Framington State out of Massachusetts. You know, in the draft, I always look for a college I've never heard of before. This is it. Yep. Division three school out of Massachusetts, clear on the other side of the country. I have no idea. And honestly, I've never heard of this player. And that's even with all of the draft prep you and I do. And, and we've looked at hundreds of players. I've n- I have no clue who this person is. He's only one of two Division three players signed to an undrafted rookie free agent contract so far. Uh, but he was the two-time Mass GAC Defensive Player of the Year, registered 13 and a half sacks, 68 tackles, and an interception last year. Led the Rams. His defensive uh, director uh, and coach said he's got a shot. He's a good football player and an even better person. Kelly said, I know Seattle really liked him. I think he's a good fit. That's all we know. I don't have any tape, don't have any study, don't know what his numbers were, don't even know how what size he is. I didn't have any of that. I looked. It's like he's just a blank slate. We're just going to have to figure that out. Uh, but they signed him to a contract, so good for him. Um, first quarterback I want to talk about, uh, which is kind of an interesting guy, is Levi Lewis out of Louisiana Lafayette at 5'10", 184 pounds. I don't know if you remember. Uh, is it Darian, Darian, Darren Smith out of Oregon a few years back? It was kind of that size, 5'10", 185 yep. pounds, something like that. Didn't end up getting drafted, although he looked really good in college. This guy kind of looks really good in college, but he's he's at a size which even almost shorter. limits him in a capacity to be quarterback in the NFL. It's just really yeah, hard. He's Plus, like, he's tw- 23 and a half years old, too. Um, yeah, he's sure. older. He's uh, five, eight, and three quarters. Um, left-handed guy, not a, not a, not a, not a massive arm, but athletic runs, very agile. Um, this to me sounds like either a wide receiver conversion, like becoming a slot receiver, or maybe a gadget player, someone that you know you run jet sweeps on two or three times a game, and then every once in a while you let him pull it down and throw it, um, and because everyone's you know diving up for the to try and stop the jet sweep and then you just have him throw it over the top i don't know i i don't see him as a quarterback this is, in the this NFL is just, yeah this all. is just a prospect that's limited by his physical attributes i mean mm-hmm. when you take a look at him as a player uh, he zips the ball around pretty good all that kind of stuff we'll just see what happens i don't you know who knows you you look at him as a gadget so do i maybe the team values him for something else and we just don't know because uh we didn't do a lot of research on this player um safety joey blount there's Virginia. a lot of safeties in this um undrafted free and, and he's a guy that i think has a chance um to to kind of stick in the special teams role initially but he's getting around a four three eight forty 38 inch vertical has a 9.61 raz score which 10 is perfect uh that shows uh his general athleticism and it's and it's really solid joey blount uh, physical Im- here's the notes i wrote physical impact hitter and plays aggressive good motor and plays with an edge plays the run well on a solid tacker tackler fluid hips and smooth in coverage and plays to his time speed good ball skills versatile player deep middle half slot box rover blitzer team captain so those are my those are my notes on that guy yeah, yeah, and and to your bunch point, of team captain guys uh, in this year's draft for Seattle. I, that's another thing that I've noticed. Yeah, interesting. So that to me, that's a peripheral guy that looked like he might have been able to be drafted um, and just didn't. And um, so he was one of the top five, five or six safeties available after the draft mm-hmm. for teams to sign, and we got one of them. The the interesting thing that you mentioned too is there's a lot of safeties that we brought in. You know, we our, our our team is kind of okay at the safety spot. We've got Jamal Adams, Quandary Diggs, Ugo Amadi, Ryan Neal, Marquise Blair, depending on how you value Amadi and Blair, whether they're corners or safeties. Uh, mm-hmm. Nonetheless, you know, we're pretty well set as far as starters and the key backup is concerned. But those fringe special teams roles right at the, you know, the roster, at the end well, of the roster, are key guys too. A few years ago, I remember that the CX ended up coming out of 
uh, like the, for the start of the season, you know, when, when rosters were set and they made a couple of trades and, and brought in guys just for special teams. And I thought it was weird. I'm like, why do they have eight safeties on the roster? And then they it cut it down to seven, um, you know, within a week. But that was still a lot. Like usually you're like six is kind of pushing it. You've only got two on the field at a time. Four is typically normal. Five, you, you see teams go with. Um, and the CX had eight. Um, and so they, they do like having safeties. And so um, another one that, that if we can just go out of your order a little bit that I just think um, is worth yeah. mentioning in kind of the same role would be um, Bubba Bolden out of mm. Miami. Mm-hmm. Um, big body, hard hitting safety, plays, um, you know, strong safety in the box kind of guy. Um, yeah, he's probably the, the most well-known Mm-hmm undrafted rookie free agent on here maybe got the largest bonus i don't know that for sure but usually guys like this know. would and yep. uh he's he's an, the other guy on this entire list maybe there's one more that i think have a, a shot at sticking just because of his athletic profile 62 209 around a 44740 plays in the box but also can drop back and coverage he's a fluid athlete good tackler solid guy don't know why he went un, <clears throat> undrafted um <clears throat> but uh, well, he did have a so- shoulder injury, so he only played like uh, three or four games this this last year, mm-hmm. and um, so that was kind of that deal. Um, all right, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go back. I'll I'll give you one more safety just so we can kind of finish up the group. Uh, Deontay Williams out of Nebraska, five eleven, one ninety three, ran a I don't know four five one forty something like that, three and five eighths inch arms. He's he's listed as explosive straight line speed. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the testing thing is, um, yeah. but he's, he's used a as a blitzer. Safety. He's yeah, yeah, yeah he's and he plays safety. in that too too high kind of cover four system. Yep. Let's see. I've let's, got let's let's cover the other quarterback um, because okay. we already talked about one um, yeah. who who doesn't appear to be an NFL quarterback like in his. Just his profile. He looks like he's going to well, be. Well, this guy is not. This guy is not signed. He's an invite, so we kind of have to distinguish that. Yeah. So th- I guess you're right. Um, and that would be Caleb Ellerby, um, you know, from Western Michigan. Uh, this is a this is a kid who has the. I mean, he's six. What is it? Six one and and three quarters. So he's like four inches taller than the other guy we talked about. Um, five inches taller than the other guy we talked about. Um, yeah. well, actually, he's, I have him listed as six one. So okay. six he, one two Oh eight. Yeah. looks like an NFL quarterback as far as yep. like his, that, um, he doesn't have the greatest arm. Um, and he doesn't have very good athleticism. Yeah. So he's, he's more of, a. he, he had a it, 25, uh, and a half inch vertical, just so you know, and a nine yeah. foot three inch broad jump, which tells you he doesn't have much explosion in his legs. But he's a quarterback, not a running, not a runner or receiver or anything like that. So that that's fine. He's probably got a ceiling, absolute ceiling of, um, you know, a career backup type of guy, Matt Flynn, somewhere in that range. Um, but he, you know, he's getting his his chance. Um, Apparently he throws a really nice deep ball, um, which is nice. And he throws is very accurate underneath. Uh, the, the problem would be without the arm strength, hitting those mid range throws and not letting um, NFL player or defensive players break on the ball. Um, guess guess who his pro comp ball. is? Who? Geno Smith. Okay. Which is just wild, for, wild when you think which, about it. Uh, it is, but and I. I Geno Smith had more athleticism than that. Yes, so and, and had that a hell of an arm, too. Um, but he mm-hmm. was this guy was ranked as quarterback nine in the draft and was kind of expected to go in the seventh round. Um, so I'm just I'm just interested to find out, you know, if he sticks long enough to make it into training camp where we get a look at him. Mm-hmm. Um, and he would be kind of competing with that uh, Jacob Eason kind of kind of guy at the back end of the of the of the roster for depth and and possibly just an arm in camp. Um, but you never know. These guys can, can develop, really. It's, yeah. it's hard because, you know, after the, the, the rookie mini camp is this, this coming weekend, and um, usually we get a little tidbits of, of stories about players or guys that are standing out, um, how the team feels about them, et cetera, and we just haven't any statements at all to go on 
uh, where the team's at with this list. Obviously, they've they've brought him in for a reason as an invite. So we'll see. Um, where was I? So okay, the offensive guard Shamarius Gilmore, Georgia State, six three, three hundred pounds, two time All Sun Belt team, team captain the last two years, four year starter with over four thousand snaps, but not a lot of athleticism. No, uh, um, it's a, it, he's an interesting pickup because I was I'm trying to figure out how like there are college players that you know four year starters that kind of stuff, but they just don't look. Like they're they're not guys that are going to make that transition um, to the NFL, and he seems to be one of them. Um, but team captain, and I think that may be part of it. They're looking for high um, character guys to come in and compete and and that kind of stuff. So, yeah, interesting linebacker uh, Vi Jones at a NC State six three two hundred twenty five pound around a four four eight forty seventy nine inch wingspan with a thirty six inch vertical. So here's an athletic linebacker type uh, smaller than uh, average where do you put a 6'3 225 pound uh, linebacker in this defense Keith I don't know um at strong safety uh, <laughs> um because in a 3-4 you need bigger linebackers you need linebackers that can fight through traffic and a 220 pound guy is not going to do that that's why who's the other guy that's on our roster Ben Burke Ben Kervin yeah uh, he's who, similar yeah. size yeah, he's similar size. Like Bear Curvin's a good um, special teams player, but when he gets called upon on defense, bad things happen. And that was when in a in a four three where he had more protection up front. Um, now you put him in a three four where there's less protection. He's gonna be fighting through blocks. Like the small guys like that just really tend to struggle. Interesting. All right, a couple of wide receivers coming up here. Wide mm -hmm. receiver, uh, wide receiver slash. I put tight end on here. He's listed as a wide receiver, but I got to say that this guy seems like a tight end option. Florida Atlantic, six four, th uh, two thirty five, ran a four five six forty three, uh, thirty three and five inch, inch arm with a thirty six and a half inch vertical, which shows he does have some athletic upside. Um, Mitchell is easily, uh, uh, easily the best tight end at the. Tropical Bowl All-Star Game. One of the best patch, pass catchers overall. He consistently separated from defenders and caught everything in sight. Coaches and scouts were raving over his, his athleticism and his maturity. Is what I picked up off of uh, the internet. Yeah, um, so, okay. I mean, we're looking at a... You're looking at a guy... I, I, I think you were right about him being tight end slash receiver. He's just... He's a big pass catcher. Um, doesn't have the straight line speed of, of a lot of uh, receivers, but he's got that size and his ability to go get the ball. And then wide receiver uh, Demetrius Robertson out of Auburn, six foot, 195. He's 24 uh, and a half years old and ran a 4'4, 940. Um, and I've got some notes on him, but I don't even know. I, I don't know. Like, he doesn't have an exceptional speed, doesn't have an exceptional size, he's old. I don't get it. Yeah, we'll see. Um, and then um, one more wide receiver, um, Jake Herzlow um, out of Houston. Six, um, six I don't have that. Oh. oh, I have it as, as 6 0, um, 181 pounds. Um, did not. Uh, do any of the pre-draft stuff because he was recovering from a sports hernia surgery. Um, but his approximated time um, was somewhere between four four six and four five six. Uh, for uh, that's like from his game game tape. That's where he's kind of put. Um, that's a you know, there that's someone who we don't know a lot about coming from Houston in that offense. Um, you know, he's run a lot of routes, and so um, he'll be it, worth watching. I mean, he's a guy that I think could come in and and um, push for that back into the roster six wide receiver type spot. The last wide receiver I had on my notes was Rodney Coates, West Florida, six foot two, one ninety three, ran a. Four five four forty. I've got a couple of defensive okay. backs. Um, another safety, Scott Nelson, out of Wisconsin, six two two zero three, ran a four mm -hmm. four nine forty with a thirty nine and a half inch vertical. And at I'm that size, he didn't get drafted. 
That's a that's a good player right there. Good yeah. size, good speed, good athleticism. Played single high, split box in the slot, so he's kind of scheme diverse. He could be he could stick. Um, Josh Valentine Turner, cornerback, um, Florida International, 5'11", 180. A little on the small side, but runs a four four forty. Could be a slot guy, intelligent, compact build, cornerback. Plays physical, quick at flipping his. Hips and transition stays with receivers out of his breaks, battles to defend throws, etc. Um, but he struggles to bring opponents down because he's small. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. In uh, inside linebacker Avery Roberts, Oregon State, 6'1", 234, ran a four six forty. He's almost twenty five years old, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't have too much on him. Older player, slightly undersized, not particularly athletic. Um, he was a guy that's coming in because they, in order to have a, um, you know, you, in order to have a, a rookie mining camp, you need people at every position so you can run drills. And he looks like a guy that's being given an op, uh, an opportunity um, for that reason. And we'll see what happens after uh, the rookie mini camp. But um, isn't a guy that I would, I would. They suspect to make the roster. So what's the difference between extending a contract to an undrafted rookie free agent and an invite to rookie minicamp, Keith? So when you give a player a contract, you actually sign them. They, they, they become part of the roster. If you get, if they're just invited to camp, they don't have a contract. They don't have a roster. They're just there um, getting a chance to work out. It's like a tryout. Um, and then what they'll what you'll find is after the rookie mini camp, there'll be a couple of those tryout players that will sign, and a couple of the guys that signed as undrafted free agents get cut. Um, and is there that much of a difference? Not really, except for whether you were officially on a roster or not. So there were uh, five invites. Caleb Ellaby, who we mentioned mm-hmm. earlier, was one, and then there's 14 signed guys, so 19 total. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you know? Have you heard of anybody coming to the rookie mini camp that's already on the roster? Um, no, I have. I also wasn't looking. <laughs> so, like, like a Daryl Turner last year came, I think, and a couple other yeah. players. But um, uh, typically, you'll have guys that missed, and then are drafted, and then are drafted guys too. So yeah. then we've got nine draft picks. So you know, twenty eight, yep. twenty eight players. Uh, yeah, at, at a minimum, there's usually um, forty five or so that end up being there. So yeah, there'll be guys that are um, rehabbing that, that are going to come out and, and do parts of drills in order to get some work in. There'll be um, a guy like um, the receiver we drafted last year. Eskridge. Eskridge um, will probably be because he missed most of the year. And so getting some extra reps um, would be good for him. Marquise Blair. I mean, there's there's quite a few yep. different players. Yeah, uh, you probably will see Stone Forsyth and Jake Curran out there again uh, because they're competing for um, jobs, yeah. and yeah. so they're the type. And they didn't play much. Well, Curran did, but Forsyth definitely didn't. So getting guys like that out there would be helpful. And there's uh, really no linemen. I mean, there's that one guy, the Matthew Gotell, and then uh, Shamaris Gilmore. That was it. Oh, as far as offensive linemen, mm-hmm. um, uh, Alan Randall um, is an invite. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and so he's, he's gonna. Yep. Yep. Uh, he'll be there. Um, Maybe a guy like Dakota Shepley or something shows up. Oh yeah, that's another one. Because especially since he wasn't with the team until the start of the season. Um, Pierre Olivier Lestage, maybe at guard or yeah. center. I still so, think he's a center. So, uh, what do the invites overall tell you? What what are they looking for here? It looks like they're looking for a little bit of athleticism. Yeah, the invites are more athletic than the people they sign, which I thought was kind of funny. Um, but the what it looks like to me is that they're like, okay, we're bringing in a bunch of safeties because clearly they want to add um, some athleticism, some some something there. Um, because either because of injury or, or special teams, they believe they need more, um, cornerbacks again, got, you know, just defensive backs in general, Mm -hmm. um, and linebackers. Those are kind of the positions that you saw a lot of. And there's, I mean, there's the positions where the depth wasn't great on the roster. So clearly they're bringing in guys. They're going to, they're going to look at as many as they can and see if they can find, um, some bodies that will help them. 
Who are you most excited to see at the rookie mini camp out of our draft picks and unsigned guys? Um, probably. Um, that's a good question. How about um, Deontay Williams, safety out of Nebraska? Interesting. I, I was think thinking Tyreek Wollen. Just j- well, if, oh, he, no, if he comes you, out. You said that I, I thought you, you I didn't. Our draft picks and and draft, draft picks. If you include yeah. if you include the draft picks, okay. Um Tariq Woolen, absolutely. I mean, the guy's an athletic freak. Cuz cuz in these draft crazy. picks all, or in these camps all they do is run. They're not like No, nobody's hitting in it's hard mortal to, combat, right. It's impossible to judge an offensive or defensive lineman um or you know really even a pass rusher cuz they're not having contact with the offensive tackles. It's more just line up you know, get off the ball and and try and get your hands up in the air. But it's uh, it's the receivers, the cornerbacks, the safeties, the linebackers. Um, you know, the quarterbacks. Those are the ones that get the reps, and those are the ones you can evaluate. So Woolen is going to get a chance to shine. His size and speed is crazy good. He's just going to stand out on the field just just because of that. Yep. Interesting. And, uh, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna look like uh, a man among boys um, out there just. He's that big and fast. Uh, he's going to be as tall as the offensive linemen that are there. So um, when do uh, when do they, do they come together in June? Like the first part of June is what I'm thinking with the entire team first. Yeah, uh, so to get on the field together and run drills and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, so you have um, you have Ricky minicamp this weekend, and then they'll make some change. Then there's usually two weeks, and then they start. Uh, so it'll be later in this month. They start OTAs that aren't practices. They are workouts. They are um, that kind of stuff. So it's basically organizing, getting guys into the facility for um, workouts and getting them in shape. And then they start with the OTAs that are on field, um, usually in the first week of June. And they'll do four of those um, over you know June and July. And then we get a dead period of about a month before they come back to training camp. I saw that um, DK Medcalf came out and said, reiterated what the team was saying that uh, they're going to get a deal done. Yep. That's good news for fans yeah. who want to keep DK Medcalf around, you know, as, as we, you know, we went through that crazy two week window where wide receivers were getting crazy deals. Trades were happening. There's a lot of speculation. DK Medcalf would be the next man up on one of those things so that the Seahawks can, did, wouldn't have to pay him then could accumulate future draft capital and so forth. Looks like he's going to be around. I think that's mm-hmm. a really important move for Seattle. He seems like a pillar, a cornerstone player on the offensive side of the ball that you he's would want to so build young. around. He's so young. People are going to go, well, why, why pay a receiver if you don't have a quarterback? Because he's so young that at the end of his contract, he will be entering his prime. And you can, you know, he'll be here long enough that they'll get a quarterback during this contract. Um, and he's just too good not to keep around. The fact whenever you see, whenever you have a player come out and say something like that, he's optimistic this is going to get done soon. What that means? That's messaging. That's the, his agent telling him the deal is done. It's just a matter of tweaking. Yeah, that that the the, the major terms are done, right? So we know years, we know um, money. It's going to be how much of it's guaranteed, which parts are bonuses, and which parts are salary. Um, Right. You know, what are the dates for the different roster bonuses? So that way he gets cut, you know, if he, if he needs to, he gets cut before the start of free agency. So that way he can get another job. And um, rather than a month later when all the money's dried up and, you know, those are the types of things that end up working out. And I've seen deals die in this stage, but that's not common. Um, most of the time when you get to this point where the main parts of the contract are put together, it gets done. All right. Anything else you want to cover in this show, Keith? Um, no, other than I am super excited to actually get a chance to uh, see players on a field. This weekend could not, cannot come soon enough. It's been a long time since the Seahawks were on the field, whether it be a practice or, or whatever. Um, this early exit you know, for with the season, no playoffs, just is making this time period last longer and longer. It, it so. does seem like it lasts forever. That pre-draft process, I think, was just really super long for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but now that everyone's in um, in the books and we know what we've got, <clears throat> we can kind of go through the roster 
uh, analysis process here in the next uh, you know month, month and a half, kind of before we get into the dry season of summer, uh, before the end of July when training camp begins. Um, and we need to, you and I need to sit down and talk about schedule and uh, oh, yeah. what we're, what we're going to do for the next couple, couple, three months. So that'll be fun. Interesting. All right. Let's get out of here. Let's find do it. Keith on Twitter at Myers NFL. You can find me at NWC Hawk. Find the show. Please subscribe your favorite podcast uh, platform uh, and apps, your favorite YouTube, uh, YouTube. <laughs> we we have our we have our own uh, YouTube channel, so make sure you hit that and subscribe. we are your favorite YouTube channel. Um, yeah, leave leave a comment, all that kind of fun stuff. That's that's normally where you can find us if you want to give us a shout out and uh, talk to us about anything. We'll we we'll usually respond to that, or I I will usually. I don't. Um, he does, and then yeah. he he sends me all the ones where people um, uh, say mean <laughs> stuff about me or or call me an idiot. Um, just yeah. because we all we all fi- always find those entertaining. We we do. Um, it's fun. So feel free. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> right on. All right. So uh, we'll see you next time, guys. Take care. Go Hawks. Go Hawks. Seahawks Playbook Podcast listeners, thanks for joining us for another edition of the show. You can find us on Twitter. Bill is at NW Seahawk. Keith is at Myers NFL, and the show is at Hawks Playbook. You can listen and subscribe to the show at SeahawksPlaybook.com.